Welcome to 24 Hours Nothing But Net, my dear friend, Cindy Brunson. It is so great to see you. You look like a million dollars, lady. You just continue to knock it out of the park all the time. Oh, well, thank you for the kind words. I'd like to thank my esthetician, who I see every three weeks for facials. She is my lifeline. So, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I work in the candy aisle in the grocery store of life. It's easy to look good when you feel so good about what you're doing. Oh, that is a great way to say it. And that's <laughs> one of the reasons why I love being your friend is because you always have something positive to bring to every encounter, every interaction, anytime we speak. So thank you for that. That's pretty cool. Uh, congratulations, Hall of Famer, by the way. I would be remiss if I didn't give you your flowers yet again. And another successful stint as host and MC of the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Well done. Thank you. That's a fun event. That's something you circle on the calendar every year because, you know, when you get to spend some time with Maya Moore and Simone Augustus and Sue Phillips, and that whole class was just Rooney Scoville, who's won six National Junior College Athletic Association titles. That's a, it's a remarkable class. I could go on and on about the rest of them. It's just a remarkable class. Taj McWilliams mm -hmm. Franklin. I mean, there, there's not better people in the WNBA than Taj. Uh, and it's fun for me because like you, you know, I've covered them all. I covered them since they were in college and now they've had professional careers. They've retired. They're on to other things. And it's just, it, it doesn't make me feel old. It actually makes me feel energized. It's fun. Oh, awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. I was on a podcast the other day and somebody asked me how long my relationship with women's basketball has been. And I said, you know, now that I think about it, for about 25 years, my mail has been delivered on the corner of the WNBA and women's college basketball. So I, I like where I live. <laughs> what a year, right? I mean, let's just let's start there before we get into yes. 24 hours, nothing but net, because you have been a supporter from the beginning of what we're doing. Uh, I, I want to get your take on, you know, I've been calling it Clarkonomics. Obviously, it's not just Caitlin. There's so many others that are a part of it, but it's a good frame of reference to put it in conversation when you say, you know, look what we've experienced. We've been waiting a long time for some disruptor to come into the marketplace and shake it all up and make people change the way they think. It's all good. And it's going to be really good in a few years from now. <laughs> Well, I love it. I had the opportunity, thanks to NBC Sports and Peacock, to cover Caitlin Clark in a game at Minnesota. And I've never seen anything like it. Uh, just from the standpoint of one individual bringing everybody under the tent at Minnesota that holds more than 15,000 at the arena there at Williams Arena, 80% uh, were Iowa fans. And it was incredible. And my favorite moment was post game when uh, we're at the table talking to the studio and all of a sudden Caitlin Clark comes across the court to acknowledge the fans that were behind us. All of a sudden I'm draped by Iowa fans and little kids with posters and dolls and t-shirts. It was unbelievable. And it's all because Caitlin has done something that we just hadn't seen in the women's space and that's the logo three. And she did it with a little bit of swag, a lot of confidence, and just a smile on her face that invited everybody, hey, come watch me. And then she did it by lifting all of her other teammates, right? You know, to lead the nation in points and assists, not once, but twice while she was at Iowa. Unbelievable. So if you're not watching her shooting the three, you have to lock in on her ability to pass the basketball. For me, the comp is Diana Taurasi. When Diana was at UConn, I saw the same sort of thing. And I saw Diana making everybody around her better. And she's continued to do that at the pro level as well. So I've already pulled the numbers, Debbie. Diana <laughs> averaged 17 points a game as a rookie in the early 2000s. And I'm, that's a metric I'm going to see if, if Caitlin can meet. Unlike when Diana came into the league, she needed to score. Caitlin has the luxury of so many weapons around her. And I think that's why her passing will be on display. You have to go back to 1998 when Tisha Penichero as a rookie led the league in assists with seven and a half. That's also another number I'm keeping an eye on because Caitlin could easily hit that. You, you just took care of a bunch of scouting report for me. Thank you so much. For doing that. Um, <laughs> You're so welcome. Interesting that you bring up, here's what I find very interesting. And I feel comfortable having this conversation with you because 
you and I have been in it for so long. And I always say it's about damn time people started paying attention. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get to use it this year, but had it built and prepared because Cheryl Swoops in 93 took a team to the national championship with a little bit, not, not great talent, good talent. None of them played in the W. Mm -hmm. Diana in 03 and 04 did a similar thing, right? The, the national championship, a little less talent, not WNBA talent. And that's only happened twice. And I was marking yeah. Caitlin for an opportunity to do a similar thing. Now, Kate Martin got drafted and uh, is, is probably working hard to, to gain a spot in the WNBA, which we know is really hard. But it feels so interesting to me that having that piece of knowledge about Cheryl and Diana, and yet thinking that Cheryl and Diana have been two of the most outspoken in terms of how Caitlin will be presented in the league, good and mm. bad, not always good, not always bad, just right. their perception of it. No one has put it in that context yet. And I'm, I'm waiting to drop that on some reporter because I think there is a story there that is really interesting about why with all the celebrity that those two have achieved, and those are two of the greatest names in our game, mm -hmm. why they would be not celebrating everything that is Caitlin Clark and throwing some shade at her when economically everyone is going to make more money. And we're all gonna make more money because of what Caitlin has helped and Angel <laughs> and you know, er everyone's yeah. going to make more money. It's going yeah, to happen. Yeah, Cameron Bree, Camilla Cardozo. Yeah, All everybody. I mean, they're so good and talented. They're in an, an interesting, different space. Diana and Cheryl and that whole, even Brianna did not mm -hmm. have the benefit of the social media, the NIL space and the transfer portal. So all of that combined has elevated it's a confluence of all these things coming together at the right time with a with a i don't even want to call her generational but with a talent we have not seen mm -hmm. that's also to me what makes it so interesting and the part that i from an economic standpoint go why would you not celebrate that it mm -hmm. is going to help you make money yeah bottom yeah, line because that new tv deal is coming up and you know, you finally have to give ESPN some kudos because for the first time in that I can recall uh, over the last couple of seasons in particular, uh, the worldwide leader has really been 10 toes down in support of women's college basketball, taking college game day on the road, mm -hmm. uh, things that I asked for 20 years ago when I was in Bristol, like, because UConn was dominating at the time, and I was telling my bosses, why can't we take a truck to stores? It's literally right up the road. And I was just told, no, nobody cares. No one will watch. It won't rate, blah, blah, blah. Um, so for me personally, sitting at home with my bucket of popcorn, I'm just so happy <laughs> to see that when it is presented and it is done right, fans will tune in. We saw the other night on a preseason game that wasn't on league pass, somebody with a cell phone, bless their heart, in Minnesota recording, and it got hundreds of thousands of views. The fans crave okay. wanting to see these elite athletes play, play, and I'm so glad that finally the networks and everybody is waking up and smelling the coffee because, Debbie, you and I know we've been in it. We know this game is great. We know we've had star power all over the place for decades. And I'm just so happy that other people are on board now. The product is the narrative. How long mm. have, many times have you heard me say that? I have always yep. protected and defended and pushed our product. Yep. We used to talk about a couple of household names. We just happen to have more than we've ever yes. had. And Which it, is amazing. It, the mindset part of it that to me that needs to change, Cindy, that I keep referring to is the economic part of the marketing and the selling. OK, we've always tried to put games in the right rating window. We've always tried to put the best matchups together. We've always done those things. So the infrastructure for all the people that came before us, the Carol Stiffs and mm -hmm. the, those people that worked really diligently to get that Tennessee Yukon game in a window that might rate. But then the rating would come and there'd be no sales follow up, nothing behind it. And now yeah. I see that happening. That's where the mindset, mindset shift. That's why I think in a couple of years, these players are going to make a lot of money. 
Oh, for sure. And I love the follow the money deal, right? The corporate sponsors are pushing the networks. Hey, we want to be involved. And then all of a sudden, once there's some green behind it, it's like, right. oh, okay, this is a good idea. The next move for me with ESPN is to pivot away from Sunday night baseball. Put that game in prime time on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Because if you can get 15 million in the afternoon, <laughs> tip that game off when the men tip on Monday night and yeah, see what kind of gigantic number is there. That's interesting because I did have this thought run through my mind during the NCAA tournament. I, I did wonder if the men, the men's tournament might be concerned about windows Caitlin was in that might outrate the men. And then we saw the finals, it did outrate the men. Oh, I was for wondering sure. if that conversation would have happened, you know, like, hey, you know, we've got these blue bloods here and, and this is a billion dollar business and you're not there mm -hmm. yet, but you're growing. So let's protect what we have. I was just wondering, it's not a negative mindset. It's an economic mindset that I was wondering mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm all for it. Like, but I'm always thinking what would prohibit somebody from doing something like that? Like, you know, we, we got to grow the economic base of the league so that the players can get charter flights. I'm all for the players having charter flights. But it's yes. a business. You got to find a way to grow the 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 bottom foundation. And until mm -hmm. that happens, and that's why all the players should should all be in on a positive way in their communication. Like share the good stuff of the league, so more people will be invested. Nobody wants to hear anybody complain. Right. I think um, to Diana and Cheryl's point, I think <laughs> it was kind of like a reverse psychology deal of mentioning, hey, she's going to have to level up in Caitlin Clark because she's played against good. Now she's going against great. Mm -hmm. And that requires a little bit more and you have to adjust. And to Diana's point, she's like, look at the number one draft picks at that position that struggled mightily when they get into the league. Skylar Diggins Smith, Kelsey Plum, Sabrina Ionescu. I yeah. mean, now Sabrina was derailed her. by injury but right. uh in her rookie season but still it wasn't easy and now she's totally reinvented herself she wasn't a three-point sniper at oregon she was the point guard that was running the show and you know racking up triple doubles every other day <laughs> so now she is okay what do i need to be for the liberty and she has figured it out so i'm waiting for caitlin to figure it out and and see what kind of player she will be as a pro because it's one thing going up against uh, folks who play at Purdue in a program that's building and going up against legitimate pros who need these dollars to put food on the table and you're trying to score a basket against Jackie Young, good luck with that. Yeah, I think one of the moments that I think because Caitlin's so high IQ is mm. in the, um, at Dallas towards the end of the game when she penetrated, she got beat her defender and got to the rim and Natasha Howard was waiting there and blocked her shot. Now, that was a clean block. I think right yep. away, K Caitlin's probably calculating, I probably could have made that play in college, but I need to pull mm -hmm. up that short jump shot because if I over-penetrate that deep, Natasha is waiting to block her shot. So I thought that was one moment that I went, mm -hmm. I bet she, I know yep. she calculated in her mind because she didn't have any problems with anything else. She handled the double team. She handled ball screen mm -hmm. offense. She handled ball screen defense. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm not surprised at what she was able to do. 21 points, she had a bunch of threes. I mean, yep. we'll see. You're right about the 17 and the 7.1. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. 7.5 for Penichero at 98. Five. Yep. Interesting. Well, yeah. And for me, on that, 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 that first game for Caitlin, um, 16 of those 21 in the first half, scoreless in the third quarter. So the defensive adjustments were made by the wings. And that was a defense that was playing without Satu Sabali and all right. of that length that can chase up top. Um, and then five points in the fourth quarter. And where Caitlin got into trouble, where she had to sit, was her defense. Um, yeah. uh, moving, <laughs> trying to keep up with, you know, Veronica Burton is really good, but she's not Tosh Cloud. She's not Brittany Sykes. You know what I mean? With the basketball in her hand. So um, if Caitlin was getting caught and picking up defensive fouls and that, that's on tape. And now everybody's going to try to put her in those situations because sure. she cannot hurt you if she's on the bench in foul right. trouble. That's the part about college that no one could put her in foul trouble because they've yeah. 
his own. And that, that is definitely the most challenging part for her, not the offensive side. It, it is definitely going to be the defensive side and managing all the schemes and ball screen coverage and how you're going to handle some of that. And they're going to go after her and they're going to put her in multiple combination screening actions. I would do that to try to put her out of deficit and see if you can draw fouls on her and also wear her down, you know, just wear her down because yeah. she's coming off a, a busy college season. But it's all fun. And look, you know, I have people ask me about women's basketball. They never asked me about it before. So that that's oh same. So it's been incredible. <laughs> Neighbors from down the street. Oh my gosh, now you're involved with women's basketball, right? Like I've known these people for years. Yes, I am. What can I help you with? Where can I direct you to buy some tickets? <laughs> Yeah, it almost, it, it just makes me chuckle, but I, I always am courteous about you. Yeah, it, thank you for jumping in. Like, where you mm -hmm. been? Like, this yep. has been going on for a while and we just never had quite the celebrity around it. So it's all good and it sets up for yeah. a great WNBA season. And you're going to be covering the Phoenix Mercury once again this year. And I think I'm going to see you, Cindy, because I'll be covering the Indiana Fever. I'm coming back with the Fever and I'm looking Oh, that's fantastic news. Yeah, I, I, um... I'm excited about coming back. It, it should be really fun. I know it's going to be fun everywhere we go. It'll be sold out and, you know, there'll be interesting storylines to follow. And I just yeah. love the actual 40 minutes, the product inside the lines. You know, that's where I think mm -hmm. that's my greatest gift to our game is spending time watching tape and breaking it down to educate and entertain. Um, and so oh, I'm going to sure. that and you're going to keep doing your thing. And right now, Special Olympics is my thing. It is what mm -hmm. is uh, what I wake up to every day thinking about how we can raise more money and make this event better. And we're in year six and you've supported us from the beginning. I, I mean, you've been with me every year and you've <laughs> been so gracious about helping us raise some money. So I, I want to thank you for that because there are a lot oh, of people. Please, easy like, to do. What's she doing? How many free throws? Is that? <laughs> what, how, what's the... It's only 80 degrees outside. I'm getting ready. To... <laughs> but it's great. You know, it's great. And I, I'm grateful for your time. Uh, what drew you? Well, to... I use you too, Debbie. Like when people that I cover in college struggle at the free throw line, I was like, listen, Debbie Antonelli in her driveway can make thousands of free throws in a row. So you need to get in the gym. And that's the only thing that scares me about NIL and all of these other opportunities that are presented to the student athletes. Is, is it going to take away from their growth of just getting in the gym and shutting down the noise and being a good basketball citizen? Uh, that's my only concern. Cause I, cause they've, they've worked in the dark, right? Everybody's worked so hard in the dark for so long and now there's a lot of light. So what does that look like? That's, that's a really interesting point because I'm, I'm gonna, I hear you and I'm gonna take the other side of it. I wanna say this. Mm -hmm. I think now more people are going to be paying attention to everything, every detail. So you and I need to be better at what we do. So we're going to have yep. to do a little bit more, a little bit less in terms of how we deliver uh, more and less. Right. And then yep. the players, I, I think we're starting to see, this is why the portal is so interesting to me is that, you can sign a big NIL deal and or get some money out of the collective. But then if your numbers drop or your efficiency isn't very good, you may not last very long and that money may disappear. I think it's going to have the opposite effect on players. I think because they are going to get money, they are going to go into the gym more to try to keep their, their level, as you say, or go up a level so that mm -hmm. they can continue to, to deliver. Because uh, I think that now that they're, we're moving further and further away from the amateur model and they're becoming professionals at 18 years of age, they have responsibility and accountability unlike anything they've ever had before. Some of these kids have never even punched a clock and don't even know what a W-2 is or right. a 1059, right? I always say they yeah. think it's a play, their coach calls. They're, they're in for a whole yeah. thing. And I think it's going to raise, I think it's going to help us, help everyone. I don't mind. I hope so, because I was nervous when I, when I, started making money. I was in my late twenties when I got to ESPN. And so, uh, I remember, you know, Oh, I need a tax guy now and I need an investment, blah, blah. you know, all of those things were new to me at that age and maturity. Yeah. I don't know that I could have handled it as an 18 or 19 year old. I look at what Juju Watkins, her portfolio right now 
is ridiculous on the heels of her freshman year at USC. And it's only going to grow. So uh, that those kind of things just blow my mind. I'm like, super excited, but I'm also a little nervous. Like, does that, you know, is her deal with Mercedes going to keep her from getting in the gym? Now, I'm quite sure Lindsay Gottlieb has her on a clock. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't think gonna be gonna, here at this time. I don't but, think she's yeah, the ones we're worried about, you know, like she's yeah, going to yeah. fine. It's wild. Uh, so yeah, well, but I'm, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. Uh, supporting Special Olympics is so easy. Uh, I'm such a huge fan of BMAC. I love going back and forth with him on social media. Uh, he is the producer extraordinaire behind the scenes for you. And I, I just, it's such a great cause. And, and my affiliation with Athletes Unlimited just, you know, fortifies that as well with Teresa Plaisance and Kelsey Mitchell. We didn't even talk about Kelsey Mitchell in yeah. Indiana. And in, in that backcourt, you have the last two <laughs> top three point shooters in the Big Ten Conference on the floor at the same time. In the history of the game. I mean, yes. this, this is, yeah, that's a, it's a big piece of conversation and storyline. Kelsey's dealing with an ankle injury right now, but she should yeah. be ready to go pretty soon. And then Erica Wheeler coming off the bench, there'll be some quickness there. It's experience. This is an Indiana team that's going to be much better. They've already been, they've already gotten better. Oh, yeah. I, and Melissa Smith is such a weapon. I, the fact that she's developed range, can shoot the three. Um, we know what Alyssa, uh, Aaliyah Boston is with her back to the basket as the reigning rookie of the year. Um, so I'm yeah. excited for L.A. Like, they have a dearth of stretch fours <laughs> that are just frightening uh, with Sierra Kahambi leading the way and then you sprinkling camera brink. I, I'm just waiting for cuts to happen. So maybe the Mercury can get some bench support to help BG this season. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of riches in Los Angeles right now. Yeah, overall, everything's pointing in the right direction for the W. Oh, 100%. It's good for everyone. Everybody yes. benefits. Well, um, Cindy, I'm I'm so grateful that you took the time to be with us again. Special Olympics, as you know, is a really important uh, sporting event and uh, an opportunity mm -hmm. for people to get involved and engaged. Uh, and if um, if you were going to say to somebody, because why you give, why they should give, and help us out a little bit, we're trying to get to a million dollars, right? Sure. Uh, first of all, I love that you're so close to a million dollars and you've only been doing this a half a dozen years. That's remarkable and a testament to you and everybody associated with Special Olympics. Um, I'm just so thrilled to be a part of it. It's uh, easy to live your life and just go through and grind and think about you and those that are close to you. But I think what separates those who do well and who live their life to the fullest is the mark you make on other people's lives. And this is a very easy way for me personally to pay it forward and to help those that I don't even know, I haven't seen or met, but I know that my dollars, thanks to the structure of your charitable system, all go to people who really need it and it's life-changing. And that's why it's easy for me to just point and click and donate. And that's why we love having you on 24 Hours Net. <laughs> and that's why I'm grateful that for your friendship and all the times we've had to share our great passion and love for the game. Cindy Brunson, thank you so much for being with us on 24 Hours Nothing But Net. 